Hey, how's it going everyone? It's Lee Halliday and today we're going to dive in a little bit deeper to the React testing library. We're going to cover two things. Um, in the previous video, we covered sort of how to do snapshot testing and how to uh, use the helpers provided to find different elements, uh, either by the test ID or by text. But in this video, we're going to look at how to fire click events and how to deal with uh, something that's asynchronous when you're you're not quite sure when the element's going to appear on the screen because it's maybe waiting for an Ajax request or um, anything like that. So let's get started. We're going to create a small component. Let's we'll call it clickers.js and we'll import React. And we are going to use um, hooks here. So we're going to use the use state hook to take care of this. So we've got our, let's just uh, export default function clickers. And it will return some stuff. Okay. So simply what our state is going to be, it's going to be um, a count. And we'll start it at zero and a set count like that. And we'll use state and we'll start our count at zero. Okay. So at this point, we can just, um, why don't we just put it all this in a div and the span here will contain the count. So we haven't used our set count at all yet, but we can start writing a test now just to make sure that it is displaying the count on the screen. So let's start writing our test. Clickers.test.js and we will import React because we need that. We'll import render and clean up from React testing library. And there's this other import that we used in the past video, which I'm just going to copy, which adds on some different uh, expect, different expects you can use with uh, jest, like expect an element to contain some text or to contain a class or, or whatnot, just little helpers. And we need to import the thing we're testing, the clickers from clickers. Okay, so we can just start with, uh, it displays the count and we'll put our little test here. And what we're going to do is we are going to render our clickers component. And then we're gonna get a response back and here's where we can uh, destructure whatever um, the render function from React Testing Library is returning us. In this case, uh, we'll use um, get uh, get by text. We'll use that one. So now we can write our first text, and we can say, um, and this is sort of a sort of a dumb test, but it will make sure that it works. So we'll expect get by text. Actually, let's swap this out. Let's use get by test ID in which case we need to add a data test ID here. So this will be the count element. And we've added this so that we can um, access it in our test. So we'll get the count element and we are going to expect it to have text content zero because that's what our, um, what our state starts at, it starts at zero right here. So I'm just gonna put our after each call the cleanup function so that it cleans up sort of any leftover stuff that React Testing Library uses for each test. Uh, and then we'll start this up. So yarn test. Maybe I should make sure it's failing first, right? So expect it to be one, it fails um, because it actually had zero, which is correct, so we can do this and our tests should all be passing now. Cool. So now let's add in our click events. So we'll start over here um, in our actual component and we'll just add some buttons. So we'll add the ability to increase and decrease this counter. So I guess we could just do this inline. So on click, we will call a function which will say set count and this one is up so it will be count plus one 
Save that to get some formatting. It's, uh, it's a little ugly, so why don't we um, just create a little function here, increase, which will be set count, uh, same thing, but just up here. And we'll do decrease, which will be minus one. So now we can just clean this up a little and call increase when you click that and decrease. <laughs> yeah, there we go. All right. Our test is still passing. Um, we haven't actually tested these buttons yet, though. So what we want to do is basically trigger the click event for either one of these buttons. And we want to make sure that the thing it renders out is what we expect. So if we click up, we expect this count element to contain a one, right? If it started at zero. So to do that, we need to add in one extra function and that's called fire event. So we can do a new test here. So it um, increments count. So we'll just copy this because we're going to be using the same render of the clickers. We still need the test ID and we'll use the get by text as well now. So what we can do is we can first find this up button using the get by text. And what we want to do with it and click it is click it. So the way you do that is you say fire event dot click. And you have to tell this fire event dot click function which uh, element to click. So we'll say click the one that says up. So then after, what we can do is uh, the same sort of test as above. So we'll just copy that down. And we expect it to be one, right? Because we've clicked the up button. And everything passes as expected. Okay, so that works for sort of when it happens right away. But what happens if maybe it was making like an Ajax call or something and it doesn't happen immediately? So let's just sort of fake that out. And what we'll do is when you click decrease, we actually won't call it right away, but we'll do it inside of a set timeout sort of to, to mimic the asynchronous, uh, maybe an Ajax call or something like that. And we'll just say it takes 250 milliseconds. But that should be enough time to sort of make it asynchronous. So we will do another one and we will say decrements count. Uh, delayed. So we will find the down and we will expect this to be negative one, I believe. Okay. So we expect it to be minus one because he kicked down, but it was zero. And that's because the down event takes 250 milliseconds. So when we ran this code, it actually hadn't changed yet. So what we need to do is use a different bit of functionality that comes with React testing library anytime you sort of need to wait for something to happen. So wait for element. And what we can do is we still need to fire the click. But what we want to basically do is wait for an element to have minus one in it. And the way we can do that is we can first convert this to be asynchronous so that we can use a wait. And we will say um, the count here, and we are going to wait for element. So what you do is you pass an arrow function to wait for element. And the thing you pass to it is some sort of lookup um, function like get by text or get by ID that finds an element. And it's going to just keep looking until it finds this. So why don't we, instead of using get by test ID count, because it is going to find that right away. Instead, we want to wait for it to be um, minus one. So we can say get by text. So keep waiting until you find, we'll call this the count span. So keep waiting until you find an element that has minus one in it. 
And then we can say, we expect count span, I guess, to have text minus one because uh, that's what it is going to have inside of it. Okay, what did we get? Has an object, but it received this. All right, so let's come over here. Oh, yeah. All right, I know why. It's because I never awaited. So what I actually got back was a promise. So instead I had to wait for wait for it to find this element because it's reserving something that's asynchronous. So you instead could have done like a, a dot then, but uh, it was missing this await here. Luckily, I've got another example, fetch, which I'm going to be covering um, maybe in the next video, um, how to mock out a fetch function and test that with React testing library. But uh, so I had a nice example to help me out. Okay. So this works. Um, it is a little bit weird that I'm sort of waiting for minus one and then expecting it to have minus one. So I probably could um, maybe to say something like to be visible or there's a lot of different uh, expectors I could use. But the purpose here is basically to test that it was when you clicked it down asynchronously it 250 milliseconds later updates the state which will render out the minus one so we were able to accomplish that by first making our test async so that we can use await and then we await for the element and just to go over that again the way that works is you pass it an arrow function and this arrow function contains one of these lookup element functions and it's it's gonna i think just keep sort of checking periodically to see when this thing exists and when it does it will resolve the promise and it will give us that element back into this variable here. I think it has a, um, a max wait time of 4.5 4 seconds and that's because uh, Jest itself has a maximum test time of 5 seconds so it's sort of just coming under the maximum Jest time and then once we have this we could do anything we want. We could, uh, why don't we switch it a little bit we could make sure that it has a, has a certain class on it, or we could test it and make sure it has an attribute. But we just wanted to make sure that the click event worked. Cool. So we were able to write three tests for this little class. One that just makes sure it renders sort of originally when you haven't clicked anything. One that makes sure when you fire the up event, it updates the content to uh, reflect the new state. So we are able to test our um, set state hook to make sure that it works correctly and the decrement one which we set sort of like a fake asynchronous using set timeout so that it doesn't happen right away and we were able to wait for that element to get updated and contain minus one and then we'll just have a test to make sure that it it did have that and really here what we're testing is that it was able to find this span that has negative one so that's it uh, next up in this little video series I'm going to be covering fetch. How to uh, test and mock asynchronous code. Uh, I think this one will use Axios. Uh, so stay tuned for that. Thanks.